Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. The FAA is being sued over the UAV registration rule. Flight design completes an FAA LSA audit. The Navy Blue Angels arrive in California for training. I'm Brie Cross, it's January 7th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. A private individual has filed a lawsuit against the FAA in the Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia claiming that the FAA's new UAV registration rules contradict Section 336 of the FAA's Modernization and Reform Act of 2012. The suit was filed by John A. Taylor, an insurance attorney who builds and flies multi-rotor aircraft as a hobby. Contributor John Goglia writes in Forbes that Taylor expected some hobby groups or UAV manufacturers to file suit against the agency over the registration rule, but when that did not happen, he filed one himself. Taylor has asked that the court, quote, issue an order declaring that the FAA's registration rule is void because the FAA Modernization and Reform Act specifically prohibits the FAA from establishing new rules or regulations for model aircraft if they are solely used for hobby or other recreational purposes. The first filing was rejected by the court and the action will proceed with the next court, established filing deadline on January 27. German aircraft manufacturer Flight Design passed an FAA audit as 2015 came to a close. A three-day audit was conducted at the Flight Design Headquarters facility in Germany by a team of three auditors from different sections of the FAA. Flight Design's FAA audit focused on all aspects of compliance with the FAA accepted light sport aircraft ASTM, international consensus standards, quality assurance, and manufacturing processes. It's reported that upon completion of the audit, the FAA found no safety-related issues. Flight Design USA President Tom Pegany said, quote, We were fortunate to be invited to participate in the FAA audit in Germany. As the representatives for Flight Design in America, it was a privilege to see in person what the FAA expects from the quality assurance system, end quote. After the break, the Blue Angels train in California. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. The U.S. Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron, of course we all know them as the Blue Angels, made its annual deployment to Naval Air Facility El Centro, located in California, to prepare for the upcoming show season. The 10-week winter training concludes in early March after the team completes 120 flights during a rigorous flight schedule. The weather conditions of the Imperial Valley tend to be optimal for the amount of flights the team is required to complete. Lieutenant Ryan Chamberlain, the Blue Angels' lead solo pilot, said, quote, We are eager to begin training for our 70th season of putting on world-class demonstrations. There is no better place than our second home in El Centro, end quote. The team performs its first public flight demonstration of 2016 at NAF El Centro on March 12th. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update, highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. In previous editions of our Aero Community Update, we've introduced you to our Airborne Partnership Initiative. Now we can report that our partnership is coming together and includes some incredible representatives from every aspect of aviation and aerospace. Our first opportunity to put it to a test was at EAA AirVenture last year. We joined with one of our partners, the Experimental Aircraft Association, to add a new feature to all that goes on at AirVenture. We called it the AirVenture Innovation Preview or simply put the AIP. Working closely with EAA, we arrived early at AirVenture to prepare our prototype AIP for its, metaphorically speaking, test flight. To say that flew well would be an understatement. It took off like NASA's SLS with all rockets burning. About 100 aviation-related businesses contacted us to participate in the program. Out of these initial contacts, 31 made the grade to be part of the AIP's first flight. 
The result was two hours of professionally produced high-definition video divided into two segments. The AIP program has been viewed more than 25,000 times, and to say it was a resounding success is an understatement. Of course, a successful prototype can always be improved upon, and we're looking forward to doing it again at Sun and Fun this year. After these messages, top management changes at Spirit Airlines. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Ben Baldana is out and Robert L. Fernaro is in as President and Chief Executive Officer of Spirit Airlines. Fernaro is described as a seasoned airline executive with more than 35 years of experience in a variety of senior leadership and advisory roles. The Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association announced that it is updating its brand as part of an ongoing effort to build the pilot community. As part of the announcement, the association unveiled a new logo and tagline, which is, Your Freedom to Fly. The NTSB has hung out a Help Wanted sign. There are two openings for NTSB accident investigators in Alaska for positions left vacant by the departure of two of the state's four investigators. Get your application in prior to January 11th. The membership of the Southwest Airlines Pilots Association has elected Captain John Weeks as union president to complete the remainder of the 2015-2016 term after Captain Paul Jackson. Captain Weeks ran unopposed and received 96% of the vote. Intel has signed a definitive agreement to acquire Ascending Technologies, a drone company located in Germany. With the acquisition, Intel says it gains expertise and technology to accelerate the development of Intel RealSense technology into the fast-growing drone market segment. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Transport Canada's suspension of the Air Operator Certificate for Buffalo Airways over safety concerns is dragging into January with the struggling carrier cancelling all passenger flights. In an interview with MyYellowKnifeNow.com, Buffalo Airways' Mikey McBrien said that, quote, the feud between my father, Buffalo Joe McBrien, and Transport Canada has been well documented, end quote. Mikey said that his father is stepping away from day-to-day -day operations and management of the airline, but that he would continue to fly the venerable DC-3s. Consultant Sol Tabuato with DTI Training reportedly said in the interview that Transport Canada has declined to approve the airline's attempts at corrective action. He said that while the airline is a strong supporter of Transport Canada's processes, it sometimes seems to be lacking in implementation. Tabuata has implied that the issue may be something personal between Joe McBrien and Transport Canada and that Transport Canada wants him removed from the company. It's reported that Transport Canada said that it is continuing to work with the airline to address the agency's safety concerns. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.